We're continuing <clears throat> with Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. Uh, once again, I want to thank the uh, good friend who got me this great light. Uh, now the videos are much more brighter, if you noticed. Um, we'll continue reading uh, the last section of rule number four. Um, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. <clears throat> this is called pay attention. Pay attention. Focus on your surroundings, physical and physio physiological. Notice something that bothers you, that concerns you, that will not let you be, what you could fix, that you would fix. You can find such some things by asking yourself, as if you generally want to know, the three questions. What is it that is bothering me? Is that something I could fix? Would I actually be willing to fix it? If you find that the answer is no to any of these questions, then look elsewhere, aim lower, search until you find something that bothers you, that you could fix, that you would fix, and then fix it. That might be enough for the day. So those three questions again are, what is it that is bothering me? Is that something I could fix? And would I actually be willing to fix it? And if those, any of those an answers are no, aim lower. Maybe there's a stack of paper on your desk and you have been avoiding it. You won't even really look at it when you walk into your room. There are terrible things lurking in there, tax forms and bills and letters from people wanting things that you aren't sure that you can deliver. Notice your fear and you have some sympathy for it. Maybe there are snakes in that pile of paper. Maybe you'll get bitten. Maybe there are even hydras lurking in there. You'll cut off one head and seven more will grow. How could you possibly cope with that? You could ask yourself, is there anything at all that I might be willing to do that to that pile of paper? Would I look, maybe, at one part of it for 20 minutes? Maybe the answer will be no, but you might look for 10 or even for five, and if they're not that, for one. Start there. You will soon find that the entire pile shrinks in significance merely because you have looked at part of it. The hardest thing about any task is just getting started. And you'll find that the whole thing is made of parts. What if you allowed yourself a glass of wine with dinner, or curled up on the sofa and read, or watched a stupid movie as a reward? What if you instructed your wife or your husband to say, good job, after you fix whatever you fix? Would that motivate you? The people from whom thanks you might want not be very proficient in offering it to begin with, but that shouldn't stop you. People can learn, even if they are very unskilled at the beginning. Ask yourself what you would require to be motivated to undertake the job, honestly, and listen to the answer. Don't tell yourself, I shouldn't need to do that to be motivated. What do you know about yourself? You are, on one hand, the most complex thing in the entire universe, and on the other, someone who can't even set the clock on the microwave. Don't overestimate your self-knowledge. Let the task for the day announce themselves for your contemplation. Maybe you can do this in the morning as you sit on the edge of your bed. Maybe you can try the night before when you're preparing to sleep. Ask yourself for a voluntary contribution. If you ask nicely and listen carefully and don't try any treachery, you might be offered one. Do this every day for a while, then do it for the rest of your life. Soon you will find yourself in a different situation. Now you will be asking yourself habitually, what could I do that I would do to make life a little better? You are not dictating to yourself what better must be. You are not being a totalitarian or a utopian even to yourself because you have learned from the Nazis and the Soviets and the Maoists and from your own experience that being a totalitarian is a bad thing. Aim high. Set your sights on the betterment of being. Align yourself and your soul with the truth and higher good. There is habitual order to establish and beauty to bring into existence. There is evil to overcome, suffering to ameliorate, and yourself to better. It is this, in my reading, that is the culminating ethic of canon of the West. It is this, furthermore, that is communicated by those eternally confusing, glowing stanzas from Christ's Sermon on the Mount, the essence and substance of the wisdom of the New Testament. This is the attempt of the spirit of mankind to transform the understandings of ethics from the initial necessary thou shalt not of the child and the Ten Commandments into the fully articulated positive vision of the true individual. This is the expression not merely of admirable self-control and self-mastery, but of the fundamental desire to set the world right. This is not the secession of sin, but sin's opposite, good itself. The Sermon on the Mount outlines the true nature of man and the proper aim of mankind. Concentrate on the day so that you can live in the present and attend completely and properly to what is right in front of you. But do that only after you have decided to let what is in within shine forth so that you can justify being and illuminate the world. 
Do that only after you have determined to sacrifice whatever it is that must be sacrificed so that you can pursue the highest good. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, either not do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we clothe? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. But seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things that shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the marrow, for the marrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is evil thereof. Realization is dawning. Instead of playing the tyrant, therefore, you are paying attention. You are telling the truth. Instead of manipulating the world, you are negotiating. Instead of playing